It's safe to say that the pandemic hasn't been good for much, but one thing it has done is show us all what's possible if we put our minds to something. That lesson applied to something equally overwhelming, like global hunger, say, could take us a long way towards solving a problem as old as time. So think about it. With the pandemic, people were dying, economies had imploded, and lockdowns were testing everyone, financially and mentally. But then the planet rallied. Governments, businesses, billionaires even, came together so that less than a year after the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 a pandemic, Pfizer handed us the first vaccine. So why not put our heads together again, only this time to feed the world? A problem so big and so old, it's biblical. We all know that the world isn't short on problems. It's why, given our limited resources, we have to pick and choose our priorities. But choosing to fight world hunger is a no-brainer. Every year, hunger kills 9 million people. One child dies every 10 seconds. If we ever had to rally around a problem, this is it. Acute hunger has many causes. War, climate change, economic downturns, and problems made worse by the pandemic. The answers to fighting hunger are both global and local. Globally, for instance, the World Food Program says that right now, tens of millions of people in more than 40 countries are on the brink of famine. It says $6.6 .6 billion would feed 42 million people for one year. And it's asking billionaires to step up. The UN has targeted 2030 for achieving what it calls zero hunger. And things had been improving, but starting in 2015, the number of people going hungry has actually risen steadily. Today, we're up to almost 690 million people, a number that's grown by almost 60 million in the last five years. At this rate, the likelihood of zero hunger is pretty much zero. So what can you and I do? Because the solutions won't all come from international agencies and billionaires. Smaller scale efforts can make a difference, especially in one area, food waste. Of all the food produced in the world, one third is wasted or lost. 33% gone, just like that. Take for example, restaurants. They chuck a lot of food in the garbage. Fortunately, there's an app for that. It's called Too Good To Go. It's free and is available in almost 20 countries. The app connects people with local businesses that can't use all the food they have. So instead of throwing it out, they package perfectly fine food in what's called a surprise bag. They then sell it at one third the cost. Win-win. In Nigeria, solar-powered cold storage is also helping to reduce waste. A company called Cold Hubs rents space in its units to farmers and salespeople in markets. To store a crate of produce costs 25 cents a day and reduces food spoiled by the heat. Cold Hubs now has more than 50 units across Nigeria, helping to cut waste while people earn a better living. Cold Hubs has been able to increase the income of smallholder farmers from about $60 every month to about $120 every month, simply by eliminating food spoilage. So there you go. We have the technology, we even have the food, and we certainly have the smarts to address global hunger. What we lack right now is a sense of urgency, the kind shown during the pandemic and leverage to develop vaccines in record time. So it's on us to say something, to pressure private companies and our government while also not wasting food. And there isn't any time to waste either, because by 2050, we'll have another 2 billion mouths to feed.